Welcome to the now legal podcast, episode 18. I'm Colin. With me is Duncan. It's episode 18, Duncan. It's legal. Legal podcast. I can fuck it and not go to jail. God damn it, Colin. I'm not above it. For a few seconds there, I was like, wait, we got in trouble for something? No. Okay, shit. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't scare me. Don't, like don't throw around the words legal. Yeah. I get a little cagey. Yeah, it's fine. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Are we going to change the music for the podcast anytime soon? I mean, I, as long as I got time today, I wouldn't mind changing them, seeing as I'm changing everything else. Might as well. So, now that I know where to look, and, uh, well, I mean, the, the new Bloodborne song, I, I didn't even go to the free library, which is where I usually get everything. Yeah. I just ripped it out of the game, credited the user, and I haven't got a strike yet, so it's probably fine. I'm just going to start stealing shit. <laughs> I'll just give credit where credit's due. Yeah. And we'll see how that goes. So. Let's start with yours, because yours is usually more eventful than mine. Oh, good, because it's not this week, so it'll go by really oh. quick. Uh, I want to start off with this morning, and I wish I could have weaved this in better, but this morning I learned, and I'll ask you, what do you think is the worst time, the worst opportunity to break out a Fat Albert impression? Because the answer is, in your own rape trial. Are you... Bill Cosby, <laughs> during his trial a few days ago, left the courtroom going, hey, 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 Which, if you want to sound guilty of rape on, like, what is it, like 50 accounts now? That's how you do it. Do a Fat Albert impression. So he's my hero. I mean, I can think of worse things. I, I, I mean, he could have been on the stand. Yeah. But I don't think... I think just in general, sort of, you know, surrounding a rape trial, probably the worst time you could do it. Um, outside of that, incredibly uneventful week. Oh? Uh, I mean, E3 was the large majority of it. I was going to say, none of the news from E3s, like, oh yeah. No, nah, not really. Uh, but yeah, E3, uh, other than that, w- watched a lot of anime yesterday, which like, I'm sure for people who watch anime, it wasn't that much. But me, watching two episodes in a week is a lot for me. So okay. watching six or seven episodes in a day is a lot for me. It's just more Little Witch Academia, because that show was real good. Yeah. Uh, I had a fight with myself for like an hour that just ended up me staring at the wall of, should I play Kingdom Hearts uh, Chain of Memories again? Because that game is awful. It takes everything that's good about those games and goes, yeah, but how about... A card system. It's just not good. Uh, was that the one for the DS? That was no, it was for the Game Boy Color. Ooh. Or Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance, yes. But then ported to the... Or remade from the ground up for the PS2, but they kept that shitty battle system. Which made parts of the game way harder in 3D. Because I remember seeing that game back in 2007. Yeah, that sounds quite right. And I sat there going... Card battle system. <laughs> yes, what the it's terrible. Fuck is this? Um, but I, other than that, yeah, incredibly uneventful. It this morning I got a uh, a panicked message from my mother. It kind of freaked me out a little bit, and I thought I might have to cancel coming over because she's freaking out. She, you know, messaging me saying I don't know what to do. Like, what they do wrong? And I was like, I think somebody's dead. <laughs> And uh, it turns out she just didn't know how to turn caps lock off. Because uh, my mom doesn't know how to use a computer. So that gave me a good giggle. Other than that, literally nothing. Someone dying? No, I can't figure out how to turn <laughs> caps locks off. What about you, Duncan? I assume similarly uneventful. I mean... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> was playing Dark Soul. I watched some Buddy Thunderstruck. Mm-hmm. Pre- it's that robot chicken humor where it's like fast, snappy comedy. Like, you'll have this dialogue, and then, bam, it's a joke. And it's just, it's, it, it's just really fast comedy. And it's the robot chicken style comedy. So if you like Robot Chicken and you like puppets well, and stop frame animation... I mean, I didn't see the show, but I 
I don't know if you can say if you like robot chicken comedy. Because you mean the, the speed of it? The not, speed of it. Not, not, I mean, this show is for children. Eh, yeah. I mean, it, robot chicken is for, yeah. you know, adults. Well, I mean, it's unquote. apparently made... It was in the uh, trailer for it. It's like, uh, the people who brought you Care Bears. Yes, seriously. And the animation studio that did Robot Chicken. So, I mean, yeah, it's for kids, but there's some good jokes. It, it, it's... I'm glad they're still working. Yeah. I mean, I am in love with stop frame animation. That is, like, 3D animation, I love it, but stop, like... Now you say that, but did you watch that that big one that everyone talks about? Yeah. Kubo? Yeah. Oh. I liked it. I didn't. I, I mean, mean, technically, it's very well done. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, Kubo, two, Kubo and two, two Kubo Strings? Kubo and the Two Strings. Uh, Paranorman. Paranorman's Car- great. Caroline. I think Caroline. Yeah. I've never Wallace seen and Gromit. He died. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was kind of upset. But I want to see more stop frame animation, but it's so expensive. Well, I mean, that's, what, so I mean, that's why time- 2D outside of television stopped existing. It's too expensive. Yeah, and that's really kind of a shame because I love... Like, that takes time and commitment, and to get one scene done can take hours to do. I mean, most of it, in all honesty, is located, like... Roblox videos on on YouTube is probably where the majority of stop motion animation is. Yeah. Um. So, Buddy Thunderstruck. Watch more Euromanga Sensei. Mm-hmm. Um. Woo. Getting spicy. A mm, little bit. Um. I took a long break from Dark Souls Three. Because I got to the dancer and was immediately just infuriated. I mean, you say long break, but it was like a week. It was two weeks, at least. I don't know. Anyway, so in that time, I was playing the Grand Theft Auto. Gunrunner update? mm, Well, I was playing just to try and get some money to participate in the gunrunning update. The gunrunning update hit. Lackluster as fuck. So I'm probably not going to play Grand Theft Auto much longer. I mean, the game's been out for four or five yeah. years. It's I mean, time to go away. I'm, I'm just... Like, I spent, what, 2.5 million dollar uh, GTA fun bucks. Not, I didn't actually buy any money yet. Because I I'm refuse surprised. to buy money for that game. Well, for how much you play it, I'm surprised. Because I know you've spent real money on other games, so I know you're yeah. not above. No, it. I'm not. I'm not giving take two money. I'm. That is the only game I sat there and tried my hardest to play the game and not buy the. Well, I mean, it helps that the base game is like fun. Yeah. So you don't need money. Yeah. Um. So I got fed up with that, and then I went back to Dark Souls, and I was sitting there, and I was like in the firelight shrine, going, I wonder where I left off. And I'm scrolling through, the, and I was just like, oh, I have to go fight the dancer. So, getting to the dancer was this whole kind of, I can do this. Holy shit, I forgot how to parry. I suck at this game. Mm -hmm. Why am I still playing? Like, this whole existential crisis. And then fighting the dancer was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Why is she at half health already? I can't do this. I can do this. Holy shit, one more swing and she's dead. Then she dies. And I'm just kind of sitting there, just convulsing, going like, that actually happened. I finally killed her! Uh, did you do it alone? Yeah. Good. Good boy. Not like Pontiff Sullivan. <laughs> I... I couldn't. I couldn't. He was, he was just like, oh, just parry him. I'm just like, I'm sitting there, I was like, I can't parry. 
or at least not him because I'm sitting there watching Perry videos and it's like Perry at 10 and I'm sitting there and I was like Perry at 10 what the fuck does that mean and it's like no when he's like when his arms at like 10 o'clock um. and I'm sitting there going like do you know what happened do you know what see I- I'm curious I'd like to see a breakdown of like the frame data on uh, visceral attack time. well like the parrying in Bloodborne versus Dark Souls because I've never been very good at it in Dark Souls but also I've never really tried yeah. but I could do it in Bloodborne no problem and I'm wondering if they're similar because if they are you know I could up my Dark Souls game I just never try to because I focus on shield with blocking and not parrying yeah but you're getting close but uh holy shit that ocelot uh I'll Osiris? Osiris. That creepy scaly? The dragon. The, the blind sca- dragon. Yeah, the scaly. Yeah. If you, if you know about him. That was a fight I was not prepared for. Just because of the child screaming. Well, because c- there's a baby. Yeah. Um, easy fight. Yeah, he's a scaly. Yeah. I don't know what it is about the bigger, like, non-humanoid bosses, but they're stupid easy. Well, so, because I know you never played the original Dark Souls, most of the enemies, or most of the bosses are, like, these big monsters. Yeah. I, I would say, like, without looking, I might say all but two. In the final boss, when you see a human-sized monster, or a human-sized enemy, you're like, oh, this is a real fight. Yeah. Because the monsters are cool to beat, but, like, most of them have the same tactic of just kind of poke at their ankles. Yeah. And then, now that I'm up against the Dragon Slayer's armor, Mm -hmm. at first I was like, okay, this is going to be a cakewalk. And then it's just him shooting me off the side of the cliff the entire time. I'm like, okay, uh, and if not that, he just calls down a, like, he just hits his... Yep. Like... I'm sitting there going like, oh, okay, sir, okay. I'm like a TSA agent, just uh, being like, calm down, sir. And he then he becomes a basic enemy in the DLC. There's just one walking around. Mother of Christ. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kind of in that confused, like, I don't know where to go. Because I can either go past him, mm-hmm. but I also made it to Arch Dragon Peak. Mm-hmm. And I'm just kind of sitting there going, like, which one should I finish first? Um, Arch Dragon Peak is, like, optional. Okay. However, the coolest boss maybe ever is there. Now, you may have to watch a guide, because it's not, like, beat the zone and there's a boss. Because the zone has two bosses. One is very clear how to get to. And the other one, I think you gotta do some shit and I don't exactly remember but it is fucking awesome and I would I just for the experience would recommend going there yeah other than that my journey into Berserk continues to just be disappointing I saw a a real bad uh, model was it the uh, The big monster thing the big monster thing and the uh they there's like the manga one mm-hmm. and it looks amazing and I was like holy shit and then I sat there and this was before I saw the manga one and I saw that monster and I was like this is fucking trash yeah even not knowing what it's based on seeing it in CG you're like Ugh. like that was like early like before the Shrek movies like that were. looks bad for that show and that show doesn't look great yeah. And then I saw the manga drawing and I was just like, that's pretty badass. That's kind of cool. Even the, like, the alligator walk cycle. Like, they've got these army of alligators coming up and they just look gross. And it's. Then you've got these weird moments where they've got, like, drawn characters and they look nice and they're emoting like they're actually showing emotion and it looks really interesting but in the background all the characters are still CG and it's just welcome to uh like it's episodic CG television it's 
it's bizarre, and I don't know why I watch it. Do you think it bothers you more that you know we could probably do better? A little bit. Well, I mean, you saw that little gif of yeah. puppet of Muppet guts. I wonder what their schedule is, because if it's like a week, no, they're doing what they can. Yeah. But if it's you know if it's what we have, they're slacking. Like, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I if I can find that out somewhere. Anyway, complete. We completely. I because of this whole lecture we're doing now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't want to go get comics. Turns out, uh, Hulk might have come out this week. It did. I bought it. But I still don't own number six. So I'm stopping at the comic book shop when I leave here. Okay. Do you want to go to? I was, because... going, I was going to go Monster. Yeah, because I, I, I never of, go there. Yeah, I kind of want to. I kind of want to go there. I'm Monster Comic and Lounge just because um, they seem like they have a little more stock than Strange Adventures sometimes. It's true. That... But Strange Adventures got that cute girl who wears overalls. And a choker. Oh, why not? Yeah. Just, 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 just throwing that out there. No, it's just, I kind of also want to go there because 8th edition for Warhammer 40k just dropped and I would kind of like to see the new Primaris Marines. Well, there you go. We, we got ourselves a date at some point. Yeah. We just got to figure out when it closes. Probably five. I we, think we got it might be time. four. Well, just well fin- finish your yeah. week. Um, I mean, I'm kind of upset that they were like, hey, we're putting out a new edition, but it has been a few years. But I don't even still have my Black Ar- my black Templars done yet, which is kind of my own fault, because apparently I just see painting as a chore, and I don't, like, I don't like... It kind of is. It, it is. I mean, I mean like, because you're not... I don't want to say painting miniatures is an art, but you know what I mean. Like, you're painting a thing. You're not, you know, making a painting that is yours. Yeah. You're like, I'm just painting a little man. And, like, I want to play. I want, to, but I gotta paint them. And I sit there looking at them going, I really don't want, I don't know how these people create, like, these huge armies and then have them all painted. Well... The real answer is, they've probably never played Dark Souls. Which is why yours aren't painted. Pretty much. (laughs) Because everything distracts me. Which is probably why my apartment is such a mess. It's fine. So. News? News? Alright. Anything we want to get into? So there's, there's tons of game news, as you might imagine. Oh, I... Uh, Why is that, Colin? Well, well, you know, but uh, I have two pieces of non-game news. Let's get those out of the way. Actually, I, I yeah, I was going to say I have three, but the other one is also game news. It's just not E3 related. Uh, so first up, um, a lot of schools are starting to drop the whole uh, valedictorian thing. Because much like, now this was... After our time. Yeah. Where we started getting pers- participation awards. Yeah. The, the, it, well, now they feel like doing the same thing with education. And saying someone's better and smarter than you is mean to everyone else. So they're just going to stop congratulating the top of the class. Because you should congratulate everybody. Not just the top. Isn't that something that's been talked about for years now? Probably. But they're actually doing it now. Oh. I mean that's. I mean I'm I'm pretty strongly against it because I'm against participation awards with sports too. Yeah. And like I say this as someone who has never done great at sports. As someone who I, I mean, I participated in that marathon and I got a a, a medal. But I mean that's a participation <laughs> medal. Like that's I a, did not that rank anywhere near getting. I should receive anything. And if I didn't, I would have been fine with it. But, I, I don't know. I think it's... It's dumb. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the facts are people are better than other people. Yeah, they tried... They actually put in the work. They are, or, they're naturally better at 
what they do, they should be... Like, if you come out of school with, like, 100s across... Like, A, a pluses or 100s or whatever, out, off, just all down the board, kind of should be, you know, recognized for that. Yeah, I mean... Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, because to be that smart, you are... I mean, that's all of your spare time. Yeah. You, you are giving... Like... Again, I was never good, like, maybe art. Like, art is the only, art classes were the only thing I ever excelled in that I ever got a, like, if you looked at my report cards, it would be like C's and B's, and then art would be like A, A plus. And I wasn't even that good. I just, I think the difference is, is I just really applied myself. And they were like, A for effort, Duncan. Well, well, if there's a place where to reward effort as opposed to, you know, quality, it's art. Yeah, because uh, my art was never that good. It was trash. But I just kept going. Like, there wasn't a moment I wasn't drawing something, doodling, just anything. So, so what you're saying to me is if... If you bust your ass day in, day out for four or five years to get, you know, 95 plus on everything. And uh, I come in uh, stoned every day and uh, I'm just, just squeezing by. You're saying we shouldn't be rewarded the same? Mm -hmm. That's exact. yeah. I don't think that's fair, Duncan. I think I should, where's my reward? I showed up every day my trophy i don't think valedictorians get a trophy but no they just they don't get anything They're no just they like, just get hey. recognized for being their hey good job and they might get a scholarship but they probably applied for that scholarship worked hard to keep it i mean the only thing i've seen valedictorians get that is a little is they get to give a speech yeah. which for some people that's a punishment yeah like i don't uh, i don't know but I mean, not a, not a whole lot to say there. Just, world's falling apart, I guess. I mean, so, everyone, socially, anyway. What is it? Everyone's special, so no one is? Yeah. That uh, syndro syndrome, was it, from Incredibles? That is the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was the quote, right? Sure. Let's make everyone special, so no one is? Yeah. I mean, that sounds right. But, yeah, that's, that's the, the way things are, which, like, if you can't... Like, look, I try in my day-to-day -day life. I, I spend a lot of time learning, be it about social issues or the news. Like, you and I both read the news daily, if not yeah. every other day. Like, we're pretty on top of the news. Uh, you know, checking up with science and, you know, what's going on in politics and blah, blah, blah. But uh, guess what? There's uh, still people better than me because yeah. uh, they're not playing games. They're not. They're know, they're living their lives. They're they're not on a bright and sunny Sunday afternoon recording a shitty podcast. That yeah. But I mean, I'm not going to change what I do because I like doing this. But the people who do are, are better than me are better than me because they tr they they might not be trying harder, but they're they put in the time. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah, I mean, I could be an amazing artist if I for five years I. Drew, just sat down and drew for five hours every day. Yeah. It's like the rule of fives or something like that. You do something five hours every day for five years and you will become good at it just from practice alone. Yeah, but we, we don't want to do that. We want to be good. And I, art's a good comparison because art's probably the number one thing where people wish they were just good at. Yeah. They're like, I want to start drawing, but I'm bad at it. But like, just sit down and draw. Yeah, just you'll keep... get better. And, like, I'm an okay artist. When I apply myself, I can draw to the point where I think you can recognize what it is. But, like, I'm not going to get a commission anytime soon. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean, it's also, like, if I just sat down and applied myself, I could have my Black Templar's army painted by now. And I could have been playing a year ago. Instead, I have three models half done, like... Three models done and one tank or APC and eighth edition is out and 
the points I have into that army might not be uh, sustainable, I guess, or might not, like, uh, that army that I just painted might be useless. But my, my point is, those people deserve to be recognized, because yeah. there's two people in my life who I would consider idols. Now, I'll never say who one of them is, but I'm pretty open about the other one. And uh, it's because t talking to them or listening to them, I'm like, oh, wow, like, you really put your shit together, and it lights a fire under your eyes. Yeah. And if it doesn't, well, then... And you get upset about it, maybe you're the problem. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, can't go into details, but, like, our boss gave, like, one hell of a speech uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Lit a fire under my ass. Um, let, I mean, so far, haven't done shit about it, because ah. that's just... I, I, I am the dreg, but I, I'm fine with that. I mean, his speech, like, I sat there the entire speech just going like, you know what, this is kind of what I want to do. I kind of want to work on kids' TV show, because ever since I saw, like, the first episode that ever aired on Reboot, or on YTV for Reboot and Beast Wars, I sat there going like, I want to do this. I didn't care until pretty recently. And, like, I've been, I mean, you've been working in the industry longer than I have, but I've been animated longer than you have. Yeah. Um... I didn't care until just walking by and seeing a t and seeing a TV on with kids watching one of our shows, and I was like, "Feels damn good." Yeah. Like I don't know if the kids are enjoying it. I have no idea, but I mean, their kids are pretty easy to entertain. I think my favorite though, the moment where my heart sunk, was um, where someone in my family was like. Hey, do you do Paw Patrol? We get that a lot. And I sat there, and it was like they took a spear and just <laughs> lunged it through my chest cavity. And I was just like, no, I don't work on Paw Patrol. See, I've gotten the Paw Patrol, but I also was lucky enough. Like, my aunt is, is a, like a babysitter. Babysits yeah. all the neighborhood So she kids. watches all the shows. And, uh... She knew I worked on kids cartoons. She's like, well, anything I would know, and most adults wouldn't know. Because most adults don't know the name of kid shows. They just put it on and go yeah. entertain yourself. And I was like, oh, uh, little people. And she's like, oh, we watch that like every day. I was like, it feels good. Yeah. So what was that other bit of non-gaming news? Uh, the other one is uh, uh, the team behind a show I really need to get around to watching, which is the animation team uh, Technicolor... Studios or Technicolor Productions, I wrote it down. Technicolor Animation, um, which is the guys who did uh, the Sonic Boom cartoon, yes. which is a real work of art. Uh, that show is self-aware <laughs> and it just... They have it. signed on to do another video game cartoon. Sly Cooper. Which, now, of the, the animal mascots... Mm -hmm. The one that is close to my heart is Sly Cooper. Is Sly Cooper. Um, now, I assume this means the movie's canceled, because it was supposed to come out uh, last year, I think. Yeah. And uh, Ratchet and Clank did pretty poorly. So they were so like... So I assume let's... they were reworked it, and Sonic Boom is a pretty big hit. Yeah. And I imagine the studio was like, hey, if you guys aren't going to do that movie, like we'd like to take it. So I'm... If there's a studio to do it... Like, I am I feel happy with it being them. Yeah. With what I've seen of Sonic Boom. I mean, if they can keep the same kind of comedy, I think they can do it, yeah. Well, I mean, and the other thing is, I would hope it, you know, revitalizes Sly, because he's kind of dead. The last game was really not that long ago. It was actually probably... Seven or eight years ago. Was now. it on the PS3? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, that maybe we get a new Sly Cooper game, and I'd be all for that. But I mean, that would be neat. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but I think it was for the PlayStation Two that I. Well, there's it. three for the PS2 and one for the PS4. Yeah. Three. And I remember playing it, and I didn't. And I wasn't really in love with the. Uh, Stealth mechanics? They're pretty baby. Yeah. They're pretty baby stealth.
But I mean, it all comes out with like, I played it on release, so I would have been, you know, target audience age ten or whatever. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Google. I mean, the platforming was really nice, though. Um, climbing buildings, swing. I think there was like, you could use his uh, cane to uh, repel thing, like as kind of a zip line. That was like. Yeah. The stealth mechanics weren't great, but the movement and the platforming felt really nice. Oh, I, w- I was dead wrong. I thought the last game was at seven or eight years ago. It was a four. Ah. Right, right at the end, end of... of PS3, right before the PS4. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I they're games that if I would have never played them and jumped in now, they're pretty, like, they're par. Like, they're not great. They're not, you know, they're not a... Mar- they're not a Nintendo. Yeah. Polish but they level. are kind of... But like, because I played them as a kid, I like them. I mean, they're right up there with Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter. Yeah. Although, that's another series I don't think I've seen in a long time. Jack, Jack and, Daxter? and Daxter? Well, most people don't even know the fourth game exists. Isn't that just Daxter? No. Well, I mean, if you count that, the fifth game. And if you count Jack, Jack X, the sixth game. Because there's Jack... One, two... Well, there's Jack and Daxter. Daxter, the precursor legacy. And then Jack 2, Jack 3, Jack X. Daxter for the PSP. Mother of God. And then Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier. A game that no one, including myself, has never played. Was not even by... Was not, that a racing what, Wasn't even by... not. No, it was a full, full like, 3D adventure platformer, like the other ones. More, It was more like the first game. And uh, was not done by Naughty Dog. So it just kind of got swept aside, and no one, I don't think anyone's ever played it. I've seen it once. Saw it in a GameStop. Didn't pick it up, because this was long after I should be buying PS2 games. Yeah. So before we get into news, Mm -hmm. I just want to... Speaking of things coming back from the dead... Oh, because I got more on on that, too. Okay. Go on. Did you hear that Atari wants to make a new console? I did not. Not a good idea. Do you remember the last Atari console to come out? I mean, if it wasn't the 7600, no. The Atari Jaguar in 1993. Mm. Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, God bless them for having... Like, I didn't even know Atari was doing anything. I mean, they're probably... They've probably been... Pu- they're one of those companies that they've probably been publishing forever. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you can do it. And I'm all for someone trying, but now is a really weird time to get in. Yeah. Because if I were to take a stab at it, they would try and make another... Uh, an Ouya or a shield. Oh. Like, they'd make one of those lower tier things that, like, just dead on arrival like the Nokia uh, game Nokia had a gaming cell phone probably back when I was in high, my last year of high school 2006 2007 because I did a victory lap because I didn't I failed math one year and that set me behind and then I was like you know what I want my advanced math and trigonometry in three space that didn't the go The Nokia well. N-Gage. Yes, that was it. Ugh. It was Ugh. an ugly, Ugh. sin against God phone. It looks like one of those things that you pick up at Burger King that has, like, it looks one like, game on it. It looks like a virtual, like, a virtual pet, like, thing. I kind of miss my virtual pets. I'm, because I had uh, one of the original Digimon, like it was like this black, this gray, uh, just rectangle with a keychain on it, and I had it, and I loved that thing, and then I lo- I back in grade five, so back in the early ninety or er, early nineties, and I could never find it again. There was one other kid in my elementary school that had one of those Digi- those Digimon virtual pets, and we battle all the time, and it was great. I, now, see, it sounds like you had a season one 
yeah. version because it was the rectangle ones. I had a season two one where they kind of look like mini walkie talkies. Oh, the Digivices? Yeah. Yeah, I had one of those too. Uh, it, that was more the game, a game because you'd fight like. There was random battles. There were random battles, but they were all from the story of the first uh, Digimon game. No, not yeah. this one. No, oh. This was like. It was like Pokemon Go. Sort of. It just counted your steps, and every like 3,000 steps, you'd fight a black tower from season two. And that was it. A black tower? Remember the villain yeah. Digimon Season 2 build up Black Towers? Yeah, you just fight Black Towers. The, that, there was one before that, though, where it was the original Digivice. Oh, probably, but and I... And you'd fight all the mon- all the bad guys from the original series, like the first series. Yeah, this was not this. This okay. was everything shake-based. The steps were shakes, and the fights were uh, how fast can you shake in the span of three seconds. And okay. That, and that determined your attack strength. Yeah, no, in mine, you had two buttons. You had... Well, you know how the Digivices has, have... The one big button and the two big little buttons. Yep. You would square off, and then it became a who would shoot. Like you'd click up or down for up attack or down attack, and if you chose, like it was like this weird rock paper scissors, or not rock paper scissors, but if you chose the same button press that the computer chose it would cancel the attack but if you chose wrong if you chose like it it's kind of weird because if you chose the right one and both shots would go over each other but you'd get the hit and win and they their attack wouldn't hit yeah it's a little weird but it sounds more involved than what i had yeah I can't remember if that's... But I definitely remember those uh, second season Digivices because everyone was like, Oh, Duncan, check out these Digivices! And I'm sitting there like... Oh. See, you you and I went to school in different neighborhoods because I was the only kid with one. Because that was like height of Pokemon. Yeah. Like when Pokemon cards were getting banned. And they're like, yeah, Pokemon cards. And I was like, I'm just going to train my jerk-off hand because nobody wore those on, on your fucking paint clip. You just shook them all day. Yeah. And then the ones with the cards came out. Season like, 3s, yep. Yep, I remember those. And I think they stopped after that. Those were big in middle school. <laughs> but I think that's when they stopped as well, because we're in middle school. And then Beyblades came out. Yeah. I was too poor for Beyblades. I was the only kid at my school with Beyblades, and I was like... I'm in grade 8. I'm getting too old for I this. had these shitty... Uh, they weren't even rip-off ones. They were literally just tops. Yeah. Uh, but I would use them... But I was poor and I still wanted to play Beyblade, so I'd fight, still might fight my friends. And these were like... We're talking a half, 40% the size. Yeah. But the thing was, they were so small in height, they actually went under the attack ring of Beyblades and just immediately knocked them all off balance. <laughs> they won every time, even though they were cheap garbage. But another thing is coming back from the dead today. Okay. Um, it's the uh, Let, let's just let's just break out the Lazarus pit. It, it's the fifteenth uh, anniversary of something that I see you're pseudo familiar with because I can see one of the some of the books on your shelf there. Dot hack. Oh shit. Uh, the GU games. Oh. Which, which those are my dot yeah. hack games. I no, never I, played the first yeah. four. No, I I was big into GU. So the, the GU games are all being remastered. Fuck, okay. Uh, they didn't give a release date, but they said they're 80% done. They're all getting re-released at 1080p 60. They're adding new content. They are... And I assume... Because they specifically said, there's a lot of people who don't know the world of Dot .hack. They're making a new one. There's no oh. way they're not if they're remastering them. Oh. So, and like, if we're talking about the... My pillars of not even JRPGs, oh. RPGs as a whole. My pillars: Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, Dot Hack. So like, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. In the bottom closet of my dresser, there is just Dot Hack light novels, Dot Hack GU. There is Dot Hack. Well, there's other things in there that should not see the light of day because I bought all that manga when I was like in high school and yeah. was like. Oh man, this looks really cool. I, I mean, 
Yeah, Dar- Dot Hack came along in my, my formative, edgy years where, like, I mean, I remember calling everything Haseo because he was cool. I need alcohol. <laughs> I don't have alcohol. But yeah, uh, whenever the whenever that comes out, like if you've never played those games, they're like of the uh, faux MMO. They're the best. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they might be the only ones I've played. I mean, the combat for the original Dot Hack felt clunky, and then when Dot Hack to you come came along, holy shit, sweat, sweet English, switching between weapons was just so nice. Yeah. Like, oh. Damn good, damn good games. Once you got those fucking... Once you got his last form and you had the guns and you were just kind of flipping through the battles, just going... Pew, 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 matrixing just everywhere, getting up into people's grill and just blowing them away with... Oh, the combat system was so nice. I loved it. So you're pretty excited then? Yes. Because I, I will... 100% pick those up. Like, it's... There are gonna be some issues, because there were some issues with that game when it came out. But, um... I just... Remember having a good time with that game all around. Yeah. Until I got the... To the... The, the terrible forest. It's not ringing a bell. Like, well, I know I played well, and beat all of them, but... Yeah, once you beat the last game... There's an option to meet with one of the characters from the Dot Hack GU series. Uh, and she's like, hey, come to the for- Forest of Pain, I think. That sounds right. And I think it's 99. It's a 99 level dungeon that you have to fight your way through, and it gets sig- progressively more awful the, more, the deeper you go. And apparently at the end of the dungeon, you get... No one's ever made it, and it's rumored in the Dot .hack community that if you make it to the bottom of the dungeon, you meet with the creator and find out the truth about the world. I mean, I'm sure someone's done. Yeah, well, yeah. But it's one of those things where, like, those games came out at a time where you'd never think to Google it. No, it's in-game rumor. Rumor. Uh, so it's kind of like that that lore within the game where it's like <gasps> no one's ever made it to the 99th level of the forest of pain and you're just like well I'm the main character I'm gonna do it he's cool cause he was a do you remember, do you remember what he called himself Duncan a P P P no no too many P's just one P a player killer killer there you go he killed, he killed the, the bad player. guys. He p- killed the player killers, and then Adley, Adley, that sounds right, was like, "You shouldn't do that, the <laughs> seal." He was like, "Fuck you!" And then Pi showed up with her big ass titties. That's that's all of my memory from that game. Yes, Haseo was cool, and Pi was hot. Yes. Uh, Don't say no to me. I mean the the stand battles. Oh yeah, and everyone has the stands. The, the epitaph battles were kind of cool. Flashy as fuck. Talking shit on my girl. Yeah, I am. This pipe's great. Yeah. She's no alcade. She's the tomboy one, right? She's the one that's always yelling at at the top. Who has <laughs> Yeah, she's the... I mean, she also... There big, was, big ol' honkers because it's a JRPG, but she was like the tomboy No, she type. didn't. She didn't have... Well, I mean, a lot of this is fan Yeah, a lot okay, of okay, this is Okay, here's a loading screen. Look, look at those. They're enormous. Okay, but the character model... No, the character model was probably fine. It's probably pretty tame. Any other things coming back from the dead? Um, no. Oh, I will, I will, just to cover all our bases before we get into the, the big news of E3. Uh, DC started this new thing called Dark Days The Forge. 
uh, which the cover, super metal, fucking crazy, looks awesome, and uh, apparently uh, Scott Snyder, who's like seen as one of the best comic book writers, has been planting seeds about this event for like 10 years, and like, I'm not keen enough to have never ever picked up on like plot holes yeah. of like, oh, this was never answered from issue whatever, but... Um, apparently it's this huge event that's going to reveal everything. And, I, uh, I mean, I've, re I've read the first issue. I'm, color me interested. There's some crazy ancient technology. There's something about that goes all Dark Soulsy and talks about the dawn of man. Okay. There's, like, a bat mech. And... I won't give away the, the ending of uh, the first issue, but it ends with a, like, oh, shit, like, Batman has been keeping a secret from his readers for a long time. That doesn't surprise me. He's Batman. And it also introduced a bunch of characters I'd never heard of, like uh, Mr. Terrific in, like, Captain Amazing, I think. <laughs> I was like, I never heard of these people. Some of those old comic book <laughs> characters that they're trying to revive. But yeah, if, if you're interested in uh, huge, uh, you know, cross-character events, seems to be a way to look. Oh god, why is Galactus a, a It's not girl? Galactus, it's Galactus's daughter. Galactica? Galactica. Marvel, bring back Galactica. Please. Um... Well, yeah, let's get into the big old, big old E3 shit. Because there's a... What a surprise. There's a lot. Yep. So, uh... We'll skip EA. Because, uh, for two reasons. Uh, a, we talked about it last week. Uh, B, I erased all my notes. So I, uh, don't remember any of that. Okay. So I just have from Microsoft on... And we'll, we'll, we'll start with Microsoft, and I... Now, you didn't watch them. No. Okay, I've watched them all twice. I've watched select trailers of things that I was interested, that interested in. Alright, so the the big news right off the top, and, and uh, watching, I think, the episode of Snake Pass that went up today, I called it. I didn't call that it was going to be called Xbox One X, but I called 499 US... Which uh, is not cheap for our poor Canadian loony. Nope. Uh, comes out to like six seventy five, seven hundred, somewhere in there. And then once you factor in taxes, that's gonna be a an expensive console. Yep. Apparently, they're selling it, the hardware at a loss. That's pretty standard. Yeah. Um. And they're gonna try and make it all up in software sales. I I'm very very curious as to to what happens because it is undoubtedly a powerful machine mm -hmm. but now it's a bigger step up from the xbox one than the ps4 pro was to the ps4 yeah but the pro sales have been pretty soft okay because i guess people just weren't ready for a new console no i wonder if this will be the same people aren't ready for a new console well at the end of the day, everything will look better and run better, but the PS4 Pro is kind of walking proof that nobody cares. Like, yeah, some people bought it, and yeah, it's crossed my mind to pick one up. I think it's... I think with the PS4 Pro, though, it's just... There's no... Like, say there were only games you could play on the PS4 Pro. Well, that's the thing. There won't be any of those for the X, either. Okay. There are no X exclusives. So then why even buy, like why even bother buying a PS4 Pro or an Xbox? Like if you ha if you don't own either of them, then buy a Pro yeah. and buy an X. But if you already have There's little reason upgrade because everything that will come out has to work for both. Yeah. And yes, it's going to The look Xbox One X games will look better. The PS4 Pro games will look better. But unless you buy a 4K TV, it's not I imagine it. your game running in 1080 on a 1080p screen will look, I mean, 
not as good, but pretty comparable as to a 4K game running on a 4K TV. Yeah. And most people don't have a 1080p TV and a 4K TV next to each other, so you never get to see the side by sides. And those online comparisons of like, this is what an Xbox One X, this is what the same game running on the X looks like compared to the One, are lies. Because unless you're looking at it through two monitors side by side, one 4K and one not, you're not gonna see you're it. not gonna see the difference. It's very silly, but um, all power to them, I guess they. They showed off games, you know, good on them. Yeah. No sports and tele. Well, it's still sports, but no, none of that television. No television. I, I mean, it wasn't long enough for me to, for anyone to really care about it, but the, actually, uh, the only person to talk about TV was Sony. There was weirdly a commercial in their, uh, in their conference. Okay. That advertised their TV thing, but it was like 30 seconds, and it wasn't part of the, like, I don't think people there saw the commercial. I think it was just people watching the stream. Okay. So, I think that's why it's not getting that much flack. But, alright, so, top to bottom, everything that was shown off, Forza 7, it's a racing game. Yep. Uh, Metro Exodus looks... Eh, like... It's another Metro game. Yeah. I played the first one. Um, I haven't played any of them. It's a... I mean, they're Euro Jank. Yeah, I know what. I know what. I've seen them. I've seen the story behind them. It's just, hey, Chernobyl got worse. Um, now some of these like games that were shown multiple times, I'll talk about them in the most appropriate yeah spot. So, um, Player Unknown Battleground coming to Xbox, which is currently like it kind of bummed me out. Because it sounds like it's just going to be a launch exclusive. Yeah. But uh, I do kind of want to play that game. And it sounds like by the time it hits PS4, I'm not going to care. Yeah. Wh- which... Well, I mean... What was it? Uh... Fuck. Red Out is another game that they were like, Oh, it's coming to PC and then other consoles later on. And then it's like, you find out it's not coming until a year later. And I'm sitting there going like... Do I really am I really gonna care a year later? And then um, another one is the Warhammer 40k uh, Space Hulk. That's another one where it's like it came out on PC back in Jan- February or January or February of this year. Yep. And then they're like uh, quarter four of 2017, and I'm sitting there going like, I might not care. Like I know sometimes it's dev related like if it's a smaller dev it might take a longer for it to come to everything but for the bigger companies it's entirely they were given money they weren't given they couldn't come to a deal to make it a full exclusive but they got enough cash to make it a timed exclusive which honestly i think just hurts the devs like there was a game uh that i was really looking forward to i was gonna buy it but it came out a year later and honestly i didn't notice it came out yeah. forgot about it and I had no intentions of buying it and that was the new Tomb Raider came out a year later it was a few months it came to Xbox One a few months later came to PC then a full year later came to PS4 I didn't care didn't buy the game haven't seen the game haven't looked up anything from about it because now I don't care Yeah. because a lot of games come out in the span of a year we got uh, a cool little indie game called Deep Rock Galactic also coming to PC. Also, I think every game here is also coming to PC. Probably. I don't think a single game was ex- like console locked. Yeah. Which, I'll bring up something else about that at, at the end. Uh, Dead Decay 2 looks like a, a remake almost of the first game because it's the same area. But not jank the first one is fun like i I played the first game and i I liked it a lot but it was you had to fight with a lot of shit bad frame rate bad controls it looks like they fixed it uh something called the darwin project looks like a a battleground type game uh minecraft minecraft in 4k minecraft's getting a 4k update which is uh pointless i could honestly care less like 
Minecraft is so dead to me. I'm so, like... It's just not worth anything. But 4K? I don't care. I don't have a 4K TV. 4K TVs are fucking stupid expensive. And because it's Minecraft, like, in the... It'll uh, still look like garbage. Yeah, it'll still look like garbage, but in the stream, it looks like they added just God Rays. And that doesn't really make a game 4K. There are mods that can make it look better than 4K. Like... Well, up, you know, up the textures instead yeah. of upping the resolution. Um, what might be one of their games of, of the show, uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That looked pretty neat. That is, that is styling and profiling. That, oh, I thought it was going to be a 3D fighter, and then I find out it's like uh, Guilty Gear or Blaze. Well, well, it is. Oh, okay, you mean 3D, like oh, yeah. like all of the other Dragon Ball games. Yeah. Like, okay. like Tekken Seven, but then it's just like no. 2D, 2D plane. Yeah, that that was really neat. I wish it makes me wish I cared about Dragon Ball more. Yeah. Because, like, so, I've talked about it before, that, like, I, I want to get into fighting games. It's the only area where I'm not super familiar with. Like, I dabble in racing games for once in a while. Um, I play sports games semi-regularly. I play RPGs and everything else. Fighting games are the one that I don't do anything with. So I was looking forward to Marvel's Capcom Infinite, which I did play this week. It plays well. Graphics are terrible. Yeah. Um, and then I see Dragon Ball Z, and it looks way better. But I'm like, but I care about these characters more yeah. than the Dragon Ball characters. I've been looking at fighting games. I love Skullgirls. I love the art style. I love the animation behind it. But I suck at fighting games. Well, and it's I mean, just so painful. Hit your head against the wall until you get good. I mean, I'm terrible at them too. Yeah. I mean, I bought, when it came when Skullgirls came out, I had it on PC and I was there trying to play it on my keyboard. Um, and I was like, this is an awful idea. I think it was after the Microsoft conference I played Injustice 2. Yeah. And like, it's getting the floor mopped with me. Yeah. I, like, I was terrible. Uh, what else have I shown? Uh, Black Desert Online is finally leaving PC, but that's a, for all intents and purposes, a dead MMO. Yeah. No like, one talks about it. When it was coming out, it was like, oh, the most in-depth uh, character creator, and then how the quest system was so amazing, and blah, 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 blah. And then a few months later, it was like, this game's fucking trash. Um, because apparently you couldn't, like, you had to sink more time in it than any human is ever physically capable to get the end game stuff, to get just end game gear. Like, you'd have to spend weeks getting materials and farming stuff. And. See, I'm upset. Well, I'm torn about hearing that. Because I, I didn't hear anything about the game. I just saw it and I was like, oh, that looks that looks yeah. good. Like, if it came to PS4, I'd play it. I think that's what kills any MMO. Like, if you do not have a decent, supported end game, your, your MMO is dead. Yeah. Uh, then we were shown uh, a little indie game called The Last Night that I'm just going to pull up a trailer real quick just to show you but we're not a visual yeah, that's fine medium. that's fine everyone else can look up the trailer it's just because i doubt this is a trailer you've seen and the only reason why i want to talk about this game visually probably better than dragon ball for me i thought this game looked fucking amazing it's like this cyberpunk uh pixel art game and i muted everything so you can see oh that looks game looks so goddamn good Oh, wow. Um, if anyone hasn't seen the trailer for the last night, like... Holy shit. That game looks... Um, it's pixel art. Like, it's pretty retro-looking pixel art, but it's shaded so beautifully. That looks fucking amazing. It looks like Fifth Element and... Oh, my God. It's like a gritty Fifth Element. Yeah, like it... Fifth, gr fifth Element meet, uh... Uh, Blade Runner. 
Of all oh. the games shown, that is like my one of like I want that game. And that's an exclusive. No, it's on PC too. Oh. And I think my PC could run a, a pixel art game. You, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Well, maybe. I mean, we'll see. Uh, then we've got um, the Artful Escape, which, sorry, I don't remember anything about anything about that one. Saw gameplay for the- Sea of Thieves. Okay. Looks good. It uh, finally looks like it has that rare polish. It showed off uh, shooting segments. It showed off uh, swimming underwater, getting chased by a shark. There's game there. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> I looked at it and was like, this doesn't look like it interests me at all. It seems like... Well, I think I'd like it playing with friends. Yeah. And I don't think I'd play it alone. That's the hard part with a lot of these... With a lot of these co-op games. If you're not playing with friends, it's awful. Yeah, and... I mean, I don't know how much... Ex- well, I actually was going to say, I don't know how much experience you have, but you've played them most for years. Yeah. Like, finding times to... That work for everyone is hell. Yeah. We saw Tacoma, which has already been out on PC for a while. It's the game from Fulbright Studios, the guys who did um, Gone Home. They did, like, a sci-fi game. Um, but very samey, walk around, read stuff. Um, we got Super Lucky's Tale, which is the weirdest game that Xbox shown because it was animal mascot platformer at an Xbox conference. It was very out of place. And looked very rough. Did not look very polished. Uh, Your Baby got a September 29th release. Cuphead. Oh, Cuphead. <laughs> uh, we finally saw Crackdown 3. It's coming out this year. They say. Um, Life is Strange Before the Storm. Uh, has me... I don't know how I feel about that. When I was like, oh, more Life is Strange content. Cool, I'll play that. But then I found out it's being made by a different studio, and despite having the same characters, has a different voice cast. I was like, ah. That kind of ruins it for me. (laughs) Uh, There was a really uh, good-looking third-person Souls-like game called Ashen. It's another one of my uh, best-looking games of their show. I saw... War of Mordor, which I don't know if you played the Shadow of Mordor. No. Didn't care for it. We saw... They announced uh, original Xbox backwards compatibility, which, eh, people are excited, but studies show that no one will use it. Uh, and then the big game that you were, uh, you're pretty upset about. You know, Anthem. The game that Mass Effect Andromeda should have been? Yes. I mean, that... Like, if you watch the trailer... Okay, so... That... Uh, Anthem's the only thing I remember from EA, because it was their, like, show closer, if I recall. Anyway, anyway it was there. And, and they were like, hey, come watch it at the Microsoft conference. Well, the joke was that... Because uh, in the little teaser, you saw the, like, power suits or whatever you want to call it. I was like, oh, well, that's how they get around that uh, bad facial animation critique, is don't have faces. But then the full trailer opens up with just facial animation to be like, no, we still know how to do this. And I was like, that's really just kind of rubbing the salt in. Yeah. <laughs> and at least that's how it very much felt, is they needed uh, just a plot dump exposition to be like, look, we do know how to animate faces still. Um, no, I saw that, and I was just like, oh, mecha suits, fuck off. I mean, what can I say? That game looks amazing. What they showed, like, yeah. I'm, I'm down. No, I, 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 but I'm just so disappointed that Ma- it took Mass Effect's fall for Anthem to rise. Yeah. Like, that... I mean, despite it visually, visually being a bit of a departure... Would you have been pretty ecstatic if that game was called Mass Effect? Yes. Because, like, it is a departure, but it's not so much like, a departure. if we got that game instead of Mass Effect Andromeda, I would have been like... <gasps> but then again, we haven't seen much of actual gameplay that isn't scripted, so I shouldn't really be saying anything right now. Yeah, it'd be nice to see uh, more, but it, it's set to come out next year. Okay. We'll see. When's the PS5 coming out? Oh, hopefully two years. Never? Probably two years. I'm guessing. Yeah. 
That's what I'm worried about, the PS5 coming out. Because uh, that's a dumb name for a console. Well, now, I know I we, we talked about this, but because they actually did put out the Xbox One X, and because it is an Xbox One, it's not the new Xbox. Yeah. When Sony puts out the PS5, it's going to be the strongest thing on the market. Yeah. Which means it'll have to be an Xbox One X2. Because they can't make a whole new console. It'll be too recent. And it's just going to be this back shitty back and forth till the end of time until one of them goes out of business. Yeah. Do you think we're ever going to get to the point where we have upgradable consoles? I know we talked about it before, but this is a very real thought that keeps coming to me in my head where it's just like... Once consoles get to a point where it's like, oh, if you want a better uh, graphics card, just go to ye old, just go down to the uh, Best Buy, pick up a new graphics card, and just and slam just it in, slam it in there. And I'm just sitting there going, like, at that point, I might as well just play on a PC. Well, I think that's why we don't have them. Yeah, it's because consoles still exist for their simplicity. But if we do hit that uh, customizable console. In all honesty, I think we see Microsoft do it first. Yeah, with, I mean, because they we, have a PC. Market. We've kind of already seen it with uh, the um, the Xbox and their removable hard drives. I think it was a little different. I mean, it's a little different, but I mean, it's kind of the same. Well, I, well, actually, the closest comparison would be PSVR, which the PS4 is not strong enough to run VR, so it comes with an extra processor. Okay. Uh, that you slap in. So that is technically upgrading the And I console. guess if we want to go even further back, the Nintendo 64 and the expansion pack. Yep. So we, I guess we've already it, had... It has... We have touched on it. Yeah. Maybe that's what... It, just this slow kind of build-up to see who's comfortable with just customizing consoles. But, I mean, it then just does come into, like, how do you keep it cheap to make people not just go, I'll just buy a PC. Yeah. So next up, got uh, Bethesda, which was the most predictable of all of them. Didn't really show anything that wowed anybody. Uh, got uh, get Doom Virtual Fucking Reality, which is a just Doom VR. Okay. We got uh, Fallout 4 VR. People are just going to be projectile vomiting everywhere. Yeah, because it if the footage they showed is to be believed, it doesn't have that weird like 10 degree increment turn thing that keeps you from being sick. It's just go? Yeah. Oh, people are going to be <laughs> vomiting. Uh, then we saw some DLC for Elder Scrolls Online. Cool. Um, Bethesda bringing back paid mods, which, like, personally I'm all for. Like, people who make mods, if they want to sell them, they have every right to make money off of them. Um, and people wanting them for free. Like, I get it. I get wanting them for free, but at the same time, like, still art. Someone still made it. It's worth money. But people are pretty unhappy about it. We get um, an Elder, uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, which is their uh, Hearthstone <laughs> card game. Coming to the phone. Uh, th th then the uh, Dishonored 2 DLC and a half. It's a standalone using the Dishonored 2 engine, but it's a separate thing. Uh, Quake Champions. Uh, Evil Within 2, which the first game is, I don't know, wet socks. Uh, Wolfenstein 2, though. That looks real good. Gonna kill me some Nazis. Uh, their game of show, Skyrim. Again? Yep. And by the way, we will see this come up multiple times as Skyrim made multiple appearances. <laughs> I get that Skyrim was a was an influential game in the series. Yeah, but you don't understand. It has amiibo support now. Oh, oh lord! <laughs> I have the vapors. Uh, amiibo support. The picture I saw that was probably the funniest thing to me in it. The reason why Todd keeps putting out Skyrim is, beware not the man who makes 10,000 games, but releases one game 10,000 times. And I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Now, the one thing I will say for Bethesda, despite it being eh, is uh, they said everything shown comes out this year. And I was like, fuck yeah, like, I, I, that I like. 
I like that part. What was it? Um, I was watching TV's wrap up of the press conferences, and all throughout Bethesda's, it was bear protagonist, grizzly gri- bear, 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 and like, and then just subsequently there were a few other games where it was just like a bear showing up and he's like bear protagonist that's good that's that's the whole push theme. bears push bears uh next up we had what might be the best conference not even just e3 not just video games just best conference ever uh and it's the one i know you saw this one oh uh devolver digitals that was good beautiful 15 minute I- Right it to was, the point. It took every trope from any, like, any E3 conference, boiled them down into these little segments, and said, this is what's wrong with E3. And you people just keep throwing, like, yeah, it, it's everything wrong with three, with E3 boiled down, and I don't... Well, it was... Know, Awesome to see them specifically take a stab at indie developers because uh, clear their big target was uh, early access. Yeah, and Devolver Digital is an indie publisher. Yeah, which is the games that are you know usually pushed for early access. Yeah. So, but goddamn, if you haven't seen that conference, it's fifteen minutes long and it's timeless. They yeah. only showed two games, both of which I think were already announced. Yeah, but they look good. Yeah. Um, but the conference just. That's art. Yeah. I mean, I'm. That's that's mainly the reason why I don't watch E3 or other big things. It's just one big commercial. Hey, look at our stuff. You're all idiots and you're gonna buy it anyway. Well, I mean, they, they say E3 is more for. Despite it having a big fan gathering, and like, I'm part of it, I watch them all live and everything. A lot of it's just for their shareholders to be yeah. like, look what we have coming, and look how many people are excited. It's not really for us. No, it's rampant commercialism at its worst. But when you have a, a conference, uh, have a host say, I'm going to punch you in the throat. Oh! It's a good conference. She comes out there, and she's like, okay, everyone calm down. And then everyone's still cheering. She, she pulls out a revolver <laughs> and just goes... Just fires off six shots, reloads, fires off another six shots. I'm sitting there, it's like, this is going to be a good time. Uh, let me get, uh... You... A nice amount of blood and gore. Yeah, there was blood and gore. We get, uh, Ubisoft. Who, oh, uh, I heard that they didn't, you know, drop the ball as hard. They, honestly, did pretty good. And I, I think what helped is uh, they got rid of Alicia, Alicia Tyler, who's been doing it for years. Yeah. Who, uh, I mean, after last year saying, somebody memed this, I'm glad was fired. <sighs> like, I think Aisha Tyler is funny. I've listened to her podcast on her own. She's funny in Archer. Like, she's a funny gal. But in that show, she was, it was just not for her. But they showed off. You know, this was first shown in Microsoft thing, but it's a Ubisoft game, so I left it till now. Showed off Assassin's Creed uh, coming out this year. What a surprise! It. Uh, oh jeez, it's happening! <laughs> Dabbing with your fidget spinners. Yeah. Uh, oh jeez, that reminds me. I was watching. Uh, it, it, I'm pretty sure you. I'm sorry, the show. I just derailed the entire not, podcast. That's fine. You made me think of something dabbing related. Okay. Uh, now I know you've watched it from time to time, but if, if anyone doesn't, uh, w- watch uh, Hot Hot Ones. Hot Ones, yeah. On uh, the First We Feast channel, it's a uh, the show with hot hot questions and even hotter wings. God, you are such a dork. <laughs> Uh, they had Nick Kroll on this week, and at the very end, when they said, we usually just put a little dab of sauce, and he's, like, sitting there dying from the spice, he's like, we, are we gonna dab? And he's, like, sitting there in, like, half a dab. Oh, it just really cracked me up. Did I tell my dabbing story? I don't think I did. Which one? Like, I, I'm, okay, so I, I'm late to the dabbing thing. And, you know, I'm in my mid-20s, I'm, I'm, I'm an adult. Uh, and my friends are all also adults. Uh, just by age. Yeah. 
and uh, we went out for chicken wings. Oh, and we just all of us were dabbing at the table, and it was so goddamn funny to me. Just every time we were like, "Hey, can I have a little dab of that sauce?" Everyone at the table would dab. I've never laughed so hard at something so goddamn stupid. But uh, back to the game. So Assassin's Creed looks like they're half remaking it. Um, it looks like Assassin's Creed, but the combat looks like it's more of a one-on-one. -on -one. At one point, I saw footage of the game, uh, and I didn't even recognize it as Assassin's Creed. So that's good, because that franchise needs some reworking. Uh, the Crew 2, which, eh, first crew was alright. We saw more South Park. Um, game looks good. Saw some, uh, a weird VR horror game. Saw a game called Skull and Bones, which is just the ship combat from Assassin's Creed 4, which people are pretty pumped about that. Yeah. Just Dance 2018. Oh, boy. What a surprise. Uh, South Park getting a mobile game. Uh, Ubisoft's getting in the uh, Toys to Life market with uh, Starlink Battle, so instead of um, Amiibos or uh, those Skylanders, it's a ship and you build and you like equip guns to it and shit. Some people are pretty stoked. Get a uh, steep DLC. I didn't know people still played that game. Look, kind of neat. Uh, we saw Far Cry Five gameplay, which I've already seen Far Cry Five. Not a huge anything new. Then the two big games were. Uh, Mario plus Rabbids Battle Kingdom, shockingly, looks really good. Did you actually watch anything for it? No. And my biggest question to this date, ever since Rabbids became a thing, is how did Rabbids become more popular than Rayman? Kids, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, rabbits had their own games. They had their own show. Rayman and the Raving Rabbits? Yeah. Yeah. They had their own show. Oh. <laughs> this is what's wrong with society. Children? They don't. Children and adults and everybody needs to just have... We need to put implant chips into everyone. So when everyone sees something so horrendously bad, it just cuts out a part of their brain and just turns it off and is like, no, just walk now, it, now, if I had to guess, this is a total shot in the dark, Rayman's in that game. I, That's my do guess. Do something with Rayman. Yeah, put him in, put him in uh, just, Mario, Mario Rabbit's Battle Kingdom. Like, fuck off, Ubisoft. I... <laughs> Then the, the game that stole everyone was, uh, it was finally shown, Beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, oh, they're finally doing something. Really cool trailer. Yeah. Uh, it's a prequel. Uh, a lot of people were getting really mad that they're, they're like, on stage they said it's a, like a multi-ethnic world, and everyone was like, don't bring your politics into video games, but like, the first game was the same thing. Yeah, the first game was the exact same thing. Um... Now, this was brought to my attention, because this was not super implied in the show, or during the show. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 hasn't even started development. Oh, that was just a trailer. Boy. The only thing they have currently done is they have a working universe, or, or working solar system simulation, in which the game has a day-night cycle, but it's not just, uh, I mean, you know how normally day and night cycles are just done by you know the light source rotating around yeah uh this has like no you're actually orbiting around the sun oh, so like on a technical perspective very very cool very impressive but uh means nothing for the game yeah uh they also admitted that they want to make the game early access and have like 18 different versions of the game uh all costing various amounts depending on how dumb the game is so uh sounds like it's going to be a fucking train wreck yep rip beyond good and evil too <laughs> Then my, my baby, PlayStation. Oh. Uh, in all honesty, their their show was pretty... Uh, it's not La like, I heard it was lackluster. It was amazing if for whatever reason you didn't watch last year's. Because it was just everything shown last year again. 
So I was pretty let down. But the pre-show showed a lot of cool shit. Okay. Um, so there's this game by Supermassive Games called Hidden Agenda. Uh, Supermassive Games, the guys who did Until Dawn. And it's this uh, like super dark murder mystery where you play as a DA and a cop and you're trying to catch this killer. And it's a game you play on your smartphone uh, while well, the game is running on the PS4 on, the, on your TV. And everyone playing is getting different agendas. Like, hey, you purposely try and pick the like the wrong perp so the real guy gets away. Hey, try and get this cop killed by walking into a trap. So it seems like a, a really cool idea. Like it like seems neat. I'm super it seems down like to a try part, it. A neat party game. Yeah. Well, especially where our party games are just Jackbox. Yeah. I was lucky to see something else, especially with like that level of polish. Cool. Um, they showed off another game, too, that uses the same tech from the same company called That's You, and that's more of a Jackbox type game. Uh, they showed off Matterfall, which is a 2D side scrolling platform shooter. Looks very cool. It's from Housemark Games. Housemark made Resogun. Resogun is fucking amazing if you've never played it. And if I understood, everyone will get the chance to play it because I believe it's the PlayStation Plus game next month. Hmm. Uh, they showed off Everybody's Golf. Eh, it's golf. Uh, Gran Turismo Sport coming out this year. It's Gran Turismo. NAC 2! September 5th. Hmm. Looks good. I'm, I'm sorry, what? I'm going to play it. Mac 2. Super Hot VR. Which, that, I mean, that game... That's... That's, that's a VR game. Uh, again, it's like... That game came out, what, a year ago? But I didn't buy it. So I'd, I'd be down to... And for how cool that game can get, I'd be down to play that in VR. Oh, then, uh... Going to bed at 2 a.m. was a mistake. Nino Kuni 2 got a release date. Okay. Comes, comes out this year. Uh, then Undertale is coming to PS4. Why? Wow. Uh, and it's getting a physical release. And uh, Why, but, the, though? but the weirdest part was they said it's out this summer. But didn't give a date. Like, that's a pretty small window to not know the exact day. Why? Oh, it's, it's popular. But everyone's probably beaten it by now. Yeah. So, and, and I was... And once you beat it, like... Once you do a non... Uh, like, a peaceful run and then a genocide run, what's the point of even playing But that? I've only beat it once. So I was gonna buy it, but then Toby... Did, you didn't actually beat it. No, I don't think so. Um, but Toby said there's no trophies, so that is a no-buy for me. Because that's the only reason why I would buy it. Because I already bought it once. Yeah. Then, uh, the show... Like, I, I loved Undertale. Yeah. But I beat it once and was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. So, uh, basically skim through some because a lot of it's shit that's already known. Uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which is the standalone, uh, bet set between two and three game where you play as Chloe. Looks good. I don't know. I was looking at a wall because I don't want to get spoiled. Horizon Zero Dawn got, uh, DLC. It's supposed to come out this year. Didn't give a date. Days Gone, got another gameplay trailer, it looks like uh, Days Gone. Shadow of the Colossus, from the ground up remake. What? Yes. Hell looks no. very pretty. Looks very pretty. Um, it's being done by Blue Point, who is like the studio who does most of the remasters. Um, Neat. Looks, looks good. Uh, Monster Hunter World. Oh, I've that... never cared about Monster Hunter. This trailer gave me an erection. It looks amazing. Okay. Yeah. No, I was looking at it. And Monster Hunter is kind of one of those games where I look at it, and when it was coming out, I'd see the trailers and be like, this is goddamn amazing. And then I'd see the gameplay and go, this is goddamn trash. Yeah, see, this one, the gameplay... Like, this was, like, early PlayStation play, PlayStation 2. Oh, okay. Like, so I saw it, and I saw the trailer. The OG Monster yeah. Hunters. And I'd... Just be like, oh man, I really want to get me some Monster Hunter, and because we lived in a sec in a small town, never saw a Monster Hunter game. Yeah, we got uh, showed more Marvel's Capcom comes out uh, September nineteenth. Chun Li looks awful. She really does. Uh, Call of Duty was shown. We've already seen it. 
Uh, Skyrim was shown again. Then we got a handful of uh, VR games. So we got Star Child, uh, The Inpatient, which is a horror VR game done by guys who did Until Dawn. So I'm curious to see that. The best VR game shown, Final Fantasy XV, Monster of the Deep, which is just VR fishing. That's one. Like France set a franchise. Like you don't see many hunting or fishing games for the current consoles. You know, I was thinking about that too recently because I actually enjoy a good hunting game. Yeah. I don't know why. Just always have, and there haven't been any for a long time. Like good well, ones. Well, not since the PS3 because there was Cabela's Big Game Hunting. There was Big Game Hunting. Ex- like extreme where the wolves would like tear out your jugular i mean i guess the closest thing we've got this generation is uh duck dynasty you shoot ducks if you didn't know that game that that show has a game you know if you also didn't know it's because that that game came out when i was working at target best-selling game sold out constantly people really wanted that duck dynasty what? game what well we live in the we, oh yeah we live in a backwater community yeah it was sold out all over the place. Okay, sold very man. well. Um, mm. Bravo Team, modern day VR shooter, uh, saw a game called Moss, which uh, is like a third person. It's really just a, a platforming game where you play as a mouse. It's just, it is a VR game. Oh, it's, oh, it's a VR game? Yeah, so it's just you're like moving your head around to look at the stage, but... Control wise, you're just playing a mouse on the screen. Um, God of War trailer looked on point. Comes out says early 2018. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Detroit Become Human shows off the third playable character. He is the most boring of the three, if you ask me. Didn't show no, uh, date, so fuck them. Destiny two because someone cares. Uh, and then Spider Man. Got uh, Yay. one hell of a gameplay Holy trailer. Holy shit. That was fucking insane. It was a great trailer. Like, I'm glad they're using Mr. Negative for something. Holy shit. And, like, him webbing up the, uh, the crane as it's falling, just fucking great. Yeah. The combat looks kind of Arkham-y, but it looks so It's stylish. Fluid. It looks so fluid and nice. And fits, I think, really well with Spider-Man and his acrobatics. Yeah. I love that they kind of do that whole slow down thing for his spider sense. Fucking great. Um, apparently you can't kill anyone in the game. No. Like, there's, Spider-Man... An, there's an auto thing where Spider-Man will, like, yeah. shoot him Spider-Man to a wall Spider-Man doesn't something. kill people. Well, uh, he's not supposed to kill people. Like... De- undoubtedly, sometimes someone's going to die. Yeah. But generally, Spider-Man tries his hardest not to kill anyone. He's like Batman, except less brooding and funnier. Well, Batman's definitely killed some people. No, Batman's definitely killed some people. <laughs> even if even if they say otherwise, like... I mean, Spider-Man has killed some people. Well, yeah. But... Killed Mary Jane. Those spider aids. Spider aids. His radioactive semen. Yep. If uh, giving your girlfriend spider radioactive spider dick cancer isn't love, I don't know what is. Jesus. Then uh, closing up the show, as always, every year we got Nintendo. I'm kind of surprised Nintendo had an E3 present presence. They do every year. They do. Yeah. I thought they kind of did their own thing. They were. Like, I thought they were like the kid. Like you had uh, Sony and Microsoft and other companies kind of all fighting each other, and then Nintendo's off in the corner eating paste. I know someone had used that analogy. I think it was someone on the Co-Optional podcast. Might have been Dodger. Um, I mean, they don't have a, a, a an on stage show. They just release a direct. Yeah. During E three, so it's yeah. counted as their presence. Um, and their games are on the floor. Yep. Yeah. So. Um. I have. A lot of these games look great. 
Yeah. And my only beef comes from they basically opened it up with saying we're focusing on games releasing this year, which is something everyone wants to hear. Yeah. And then they showed off a ton of games that aren't coming out until next year, maybe the year after. Yeah. Like the majority of what was shown is not coming out this year. So I was like, if you just didn't say that, I wouldn't have had beef with it. But I don't think most people had any beef no, with it. I don't I don't care. They showed uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which... It's weird making a sequel and changing the art style. A little bit, yeah. Because it's super anime now. Well... No, before it, it was it's like... Al- it's always been super no. anime. Before it looked like a JRPG. Yeah. Now it looks like an anime. Okay, I might pick it up. <laughs> It, uh, like, I've never played the first one, but even I, like, I there shot someone li- a message, the, and I was the, like... In the first game, there is literally a girl just sitting there, and her knickers are just... You could drown a wombat in them, the way she talks about mechs. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, this is a girl after my own heart. And she's just, just gushing. About the mechs. And I'm sitting there, I was like, I'm with you, girl. Oh, well, this one, I don't even know if it has mechs. Oh, that, then no, I'm not gonna get it. Fuck it. Like, this is what I mean by, like, look, it's, it's, it, that's anime looking. Yeah. Cell shaded and oh, everything. Oh, shit, she has huge tits. Yeah, she sure does. That was, uh, everyone's takeaway. It's like a table. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 honkers. Um... Shut off a uh, Kirby game. It's just called, Kirby. Yep. It's just called yep. Kirby. No, Kirby, 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 Kirby. Let's do let's go Kirby. It, it appears to be it a looks, four player. It looks like Crystal Chronicle. Like it looks It looks like it, the OG. The first time Kirby I saw games. it, I my initial thought was uh Chris, uh Kirby sixty four. Uh, yeah. Crystal Chronicle. That which that's my Kirby yeah. game. Fucking great. Let's go. Um They shut off some Poke uh Pokemon Tournament DX. Which is just Pokemon tournament. Not really with excited a few, with for a that. few characters added. I, I could care less about. Uh, and now this was like a fart of an announcement. I wish it would have got even just a teaser. Uh, because of what it is, is they just said we are working on a core Pokemon RPG, and uh, that's it. That's all they said. Okay. Like so the Switch, I mean, the main, Switch is getting a game. Mainline Pokemon game. Fucking loved it. I played every one of them since Red. But once you get into the spin-offs, I'm kind of like, I don't care that much. I played Yellow and Sun. Yeah. No, it, like, the mainline Pokemon games, I will buy... They are my Call of Duty. I will buy them every year. Uh, then we got uh, the game teased about for a long time. Metroid Prime 4 was uh, confirmed. I'm not big... Metroid Prime. I'm not either. I'm not a big Metroid guy. I mean, I played Metroid Prime, and I enjoyed, but the control scheme was just, like, the camera control I, I had admitted to some people bizarre. that, like, I might want to try them. Because it's a, it's a video game staple that I don't know that I much don't, about. If you were going to play the GameCube versions, I don't think you'd enjoy the uh, Metroid Prime. Well, well, here's what they do, is uh, cater to my needs, put them out all on the Switch, and then I'll go to someone else's house and play them. Um, the the curious tale behind uh, Metro Prime Four is it's not Retro who made the other three. Um, which leaves the question: What are they up to? I assume Donkey Kong, because that's all they've put out in the last few years. Yeah. Um, new Yoshi game just called Yoshi. Yes, yes, new Yoshi game, new Mario, new Yoshi, new fucking Kirby. This is... I need a Switch. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that, because I, I, I got some Switch talk. Uh, Fire Emblem Warriors was shown. And, like, I get that they're niche, but I like Musou games. But they just keep dodging the franchises I give a shit about. Because I do not care about Fire Emblem. I mean... Berserk Brand of the Hawk. Have you been buy it? I've been looking at it, though. But, like, there's tons of Gundam Musos. Oh, yeah. Berserk got I, I, one. Yeah. Zelda got one. Like, do something I want. I don't you know what do I... I don't know what I want. You don't know what you want. No, but it's not anything that's Because they're done. not going to do a UFC Muso. Of course not. But that, in, honest, in all honesty, that'd be goofy enough that I think that would sell. No, I don't think it would. Because everyone would be like, oh, UFC, what is this fucking redneck sport? 
Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of something I, I would like a Musou up. Like Final Fantasy, I guess. Okay. Like, that's pretty... I, uh, there's enough characters I'm there. I'm surprised they haven't done a Final Fantasy Musou. Oh, you know what? I didn't mention it anywhere. Um, but uh, Dissidia uh, NX... Or DX, whatever, I don't remember what the subtitle is. It's the arcade version of Dissidia, which is very polished. It's coming to PS4. Oh, cool. Um, that HUD needs some reworking. Oh. It is a cluttered garbage mess. Jesus. Um, let's see. Breath of the Wild DLC. We got the Master's Trial, which visually, to me, looks like even Tide Island. Again, which even Tide Island is probably the best part of that game. Um, then we got what looks like story DLC called uh, Champions Ballad. Um, and then the four champions from Breath of the Wild are all getting their own amiibos. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Fish Girl's getting one. Sure is. Oh boy. They showed off uh, Mario Plus Rabbits again. Uh, Rocket League's coming to the Switch. And then, uh, honestly, the game that stole my heart. And, like, I. I don't know if I'm going to call it Game of Show, but it's definitely in my argument for it. Mario Odyssey. Oh, yeah. And uh, You can turn into a T-Rex, Colin. I saw that and immediately was, I, was, I was like, I'm sold. Um, I, I said to a few, uh, enough people now, like, I, I don't know, something about that game made me actually go like, you know, I could buy a Switch. <sighs> like, Breath of the Wild didn't do that for me. Yeah. I saw that, I was like... And honestly, I think that part of it was, like, the hipster in me. Because I bet Mario comes out to great reviews, but I bet it doesn't come out to greatest reviews of all time. Yeah. And when I heard that for Breath of the Wild, I immediately didn't want to play it. And there's a good chance even if I bought a Switch, I'd never go to... I'd never touch it. I'd just buy ARMS and Mario. Because they're never gonna do a punch out game. Oh, there was new arms character shown. His uh, like arms are uh, like championship belts. It's pretty cool. Uh, arms more like asses. But yeah, Mario Odyssey. Goddamn. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. Yeah, I might buy a Switch. That song was on. Uh, was on point. Did not like it. I loved it. Didn't care for it. Fucking great. But I, didn't, but I didn't care. Everything else I saw, I was like, you know what? I haven't sat down and played a Mario game since uh, literally Mario 64. Maybe it's time. Yeah. I mean, if I enjoy it as much as I did Pokemon Sun, which is like another similar thing of like it's been 20 years since I sat and played one. And I don't think Pokemon Sun was like amazing, but I enjoyed it enough that if... Mario Odyssey was that. I'd be happy with the yeah. purchase. No, um... I think of all the games I have ever been excited for in E3, Nintendo stole, sold the shit. Like, there's a gif of this, like, food critic, I guess. Mm -hmm. Animate, like, CG food critic. And he's just got this big bowl of, uh... The, sw like, uh, the switch in front of him. And he kind of picks up a spoonful of it and it's just got like I think it's just got a few pit like photoshopped images of games or the switch yeah and he just brings it to his mouth has a flashback to when he was a child mama Nintendo this character with an intent like has a Nintendo logo covered over her face and um, she's just kind of cooking and then he's at a table, cuts to him at a table. She throws, not throws down, but puts down the N64. He takes it, and then it just cuts back to him as an old, bitter old man. And then just a tear rolls down his face. Whew. I wouldn't go that far. No. Well, like, as a whole. No, this is, this is exactly what I needed to see to be like, Nintendo's got me. Nintendo, it's... it's see... Here, here's where, I, or I'm torn, is uh, I think if I ignore that last, if I ignore that 2016 was a year that happened, yeah. Sony show showed more things that I care about, yeah. But we'd seen and knew all of it, yeah. with the exceptions of uh, Monster Hunter. And Nintendo 
I mean, Kirby kind of grabbed me, but with the vague release date, I don't care. Uh, but, like, Mario definitely yeah, grabbed me. Yeah, I mean, me. for me, Nintendo was kind of that sleeper hit. Like, it was just everyone comes out, everyone comes out guns a blazing, and then Nintendo just kind of sneaks in, goes, hey, guess. Rip o- rips open its trench coat and just shows its fucking dong and be like, we got the big, we got the hits. Oh, I, I should also say, uh, Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, all of them, outside of their conference, has been releasing trailers and announcing games left and right every minute on their YouTube channels, respectively. I didn't write any of those down because there's literally too many. Okay. But, uh... Now, there's, those are mostly smaller games that yeah. are put out there. Some of them look really, really good, I'll be honest. Um, but the big takeaway, and the only reason why it's a takeaway because it, people made a buzz about it, uh, is uh, Metroid 2 is getting a remake coming in 3DS. Okay. Um, the game doesn't look... I don't know. looks alright. It looks like a DS game. Yeah. From what I was looking at, it just looks like a DS game. Yeah, I say kill it. Kill the DS. I talked about it earlier this, this week at work. I mean, it kind of makes sense. When, when I the mean, Switch is around, kill the DS. I don't. I haven't touched my DS. When the Vita came out, they didn't keep making PSP games. I mean, it's sitting there collecting dust. And I'm just waiting for another Pokemon game to come out. Because there aren't any games that I want to play for my DS. Well, why don't you buy Omega Sun... Or whatever it's called, Ultra Sun. Omega. Oh, is it Omega? Yeah, it's Omega Sun and Moon. Ew. E- dumb name. Terrible name. Like. Eh. Don't want the same game again. Sun Sun and Moon too. But for the Switch. But for the Switch, yeah. I don't know. I I just. I don't understand why you'd push a handheld console like the Switch, and then continue to support a handheld. And I get it that there's a huge price difference, and that's lovely. Well, like, I... It's not like I'm but saying... it doesn't make sense. Well, when I was talking and about I, it earlier this week, people get the assumption that I just meant, no, stop games now. No. Start trickling the... Like, start cutting off the stream now. Don't just end it, because that's kind of shitty. The Switch is out. The Switch is doing well. Start easing up on that 3DS and just get rid of it. There's a better handheld on the market. I mean, yeah, the battery doesn't last as long, but there are more games I would rather play for the Switch than there are for the DS. And if the second they put a mainline Pokemon game on the Switch, not only am I getting Nintendo, Kirby, Yoshi, um, Fire em- Fire Warrior, Fire Emblem Warriors, I'm also getting that Pokemon game, and I'm looking at that DS going like, sorry, bud. I'll throw it out a window. Because, yeah. yeah, it's... It's just not needed anymore. Nope. And you can argue that... You can argue that younger people who want a handheld for their own that's cheaper till you're blue in the face but the fact of the matter is there's something better out there well like not only that obviously the switch can run every 3ds game yeah they're still making exclusives for for the 3ds like i get it if it comes out in the switch and the 3ds that's fine yeah but to make exclusives like i don't think it was officially said that Omega Sun and Moon are coming to the Switch. To my understanding, they are. If, but that was not officially if they are said. If coming to the Switch, I'm not picking up. Like, if, if, again, if Nintendo puts a mainline Pokemon game on their main console, I'm not, I'm not buying no, a handheld. No, but if they put it on the main console, do you want it to look like a console game? Or do you still want it to be want it to, garbage I'm, graphics? I kind of find the graphics, graphics kind of charming. Like... I mean, Nintendo... Pokemon games have never had good graphics. Well, no, because they've always been on a handheld. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean... I think, if, I think honestly, if I were to, like... If I'm going to armchair CEO this... If they could do a very well cell shaded And make it look like, like the Naruto games... Like, those games look great. Yeah. 
and make a Pokemon game that's cel shaded like the those Naruto, Naruto games. Naruto games have no right to feel that good playing. I think it's just because we don't like Naruto. No, they they feel really good. But yeah, g- give me a anime looking cel shaded Pokemon game. Make it look like the anime. God, yeah. God damn. I don't know if I'd go that far. Okay, just give me a cel-shaded Pokemon game. Yeah. I mean, don't go realistic. Yeah. I, I don't want that. No, right. I don't want that. Uncanny Valley's too weird. But no, it's just... I think we're coming to an age where... Where? If it's not a cell phone... And it's not a console. It has no place. I think if the Switch didn't exist... There's a a place for a handheld. If the Switch didn't exist, then yes, I would totally say there's a place for the 3DS. Well, I I would still argue there is a place for a handheld. It's just, the 3DS is fucking ancient. Yeah. It's super old. If... Sony or Microsoft or whoever were to come out with like a whatever a top of the line handheld would be, which would actually probably be pretty decent this day and age. I think you can make a market for that. Yeah. But there's no reason why Nintendo should have a, a handheld and a handheld console and they don't need both. No. When they had a handheld and a console, yes, keep both. But the Switch is both. Don't need three. I mean and other than a short battery life, I mean, like, any normal person is not going to sit down and play a game for more than, what, two? How long's the battery life? Two? It depends on the game. Depends on the game. That could be an issue. <laughs> but, I mean, any normal person is going to be like, oh, I'm, my game's dying like a reasonable person, I'm going to turn off my console, charge it, go be a productive member of society. Well, it's I, only the people who sit down and play games for hours at a time that this is going to inconvenience. Well, I, I think it's actually even smaller amount of people than that that it's going to inconvenience. The only people it's a real inconvenience to is people who travel a lot. Yeah. Because, look, if I'm going to be playing games for hours at a time, I'm probably at my house, which yeah. means I'm going to play with it docked where it doesn't need to be charged. Yeah. Um, and in all and honesty, someone's gonna come along and be like, "Hey, can I watch a show?" And then it's like, "Sure, I'll just undock, and then you can watch the show." Yeah, and there's no way and whatever they're doing. How can... long does a show usually like half an hour? Yeah. So then they're like, "Okay, I'm done. You can have the TV back. You just dock." Like, and even with traveling, like when I'm taking a bus to New Brunswick, which I imagine is on the lower tier of travel buses in the world yeah has an outlet i could charge it on the bus like i don't think it's actually an inconvenience to people they just they're just just want to complain which like i don't fault them i want to complain all the time too but from a business standpoint like not from a consumer standpoint which is what we are but from a business standpoint, it doesn't make sense to continue supporting the 3DS when you already have a better handheld. Yeah. I can read that. Like... Well, it's like I said. Like, no console or handheld ever, when the better thing came out, was getting exclusive titles. Yeah. Unless they were, like, real trash. I mean... When Metal Gear Solid Five came out... I didn't. It came out for the PS3 and the PS4. I sat there and I was like, "No way, am I buying it for the PS3?" Yeah, no. It was I'm buying better version. Is I'm it? buying a better. Why would I? Why would I pay for the lesser version? And, and like, when it comes to the time when again there is a mainline Pokemon game on the Switch, I'm gonna look at my 3DS and be like, "I'm sorry." Yeah. Because I don't play my DS. My I don't. I haven't touched it since Pokemon Sun. I beat Sun and Moon. And I don't play it at work. I don't play it outside. I play it at home on my couch. And I sit there and it's like, why can't this be on a console? Yeah. 
Well, no, I mean, that's why I don't have a handheld, is I do all of my gaming at home, in which, why would I play a handheld? Yeah. When the better thing exists. I think we've ragged on Nintendo's with 3DS a little long. Yeah. But there's a lot to rag on. Yeah. Um, and I guess we'll close with ragging on Sony just to be a little even. Because this was probably the big heated debate of the week. Uh, Sony not wanting to do cross-platform. Yeah. With uh, specifically Minecraft. Specifically I mean, it's Minecraft? All, it's all games. All games, but specifically Minecraft. Okay, here's the thing. Let's make an analogy. I have all the lollipops. Everyone else is like, hey, if you shared the lollipops, everything would be great. I'm the one with all the lollipops. Why should I share? Yeah. Like, everyone already, like, in, I, I'm being dead honest. I don't know a single person who just owns an Xbox One or just owns a Switch. Not a single one. Everyone I know who plays games has a PS4. Yeah. I don't see a problem. Well, it's, again, you said it earlier. Until this whole kind of kerfuffle started, no one was talking about cross-platform play. No. It no one came, could give a shit. It came and up once with Rocket League. One Rocket League of all <laughs> games. Who cares? Now... And then it explodes. And it's just like... Yes, Rocket League and Minecraft are the games to propel this to the upper echelons of it's important. Now, to anyone who doesn't know, just because I, I found out a lot of people don't know this, is the reason why Sony said no is you need an Xbox Live account yeah. to play with Xbox players. That's ridiculous. And I've had people telling me that they're like, I don't see a problem. Like, it's a minor inconvenience. It's one that shouldn't exist. When I sign into my PlayStation and I and I want to play with my friends, I don't want to sign into Xbox Live. I'm already paying like what, fifty some dollars. You don't have to pay. You just need I an don't account. Have to pay. Uh, okay. It's still an inconvenience. I I mean, you have a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Why would I need an Xbox? Like, well, it goes back to what I said. I don't know anyone with just an Xbox. Yeah. And if and if you want to play with me, buy a PlayStation. Yeah. Um. I mean, again, it's like Sony is on the ship and Microsoft and Nintendo are on the Titanic and they're like, hey, we could use some help. And Sony's just kind of sitting there going like, why? Now, I, I will say, to put it on front street, would it be nice? Sure. But is it really a big deal? I no. don't think so. I mean, again, until a week ago. No one was yeah, talking about it. Yeah, I don't know anyone it. who ever brought it up. And then all of a sudden, one... Like, they're... Fucking Rocket League and Minecraft. Of well, all things. Well, Minecraft was... Or Rocket that, League was months ago when that... I was upset about this when Mass Effect 3 multiplayer wasn't cross-platform. And my friend, who had an Xbox was like, oh man, I can't wait to play Mass Effect Andromeda. I'm gonna play, cro I'm gonna play, not cross platform. I'm gonna play multiplayer with my friends from uh, university. And I was sitting there going like, oh man, I have a, I, I picked it up. Do you want to play sometime? And he's like, what are you playing on? And he's like, I'm playing on a PlayStation. And he's like, we, we can't. And well, I see, sat goes... there. And back then, that was upsetting to me. Well, that goes back to, that was a different time. Yeah. That like, was... back then, I knew people with just a PS3. Just a Wii. Just a 360. Now, I literally don't know anyone with just an Xbox One. So, if you want to play with your friends, you have a PlayStation. Yeah. Use that. And now, I know a lot of people say Sony's online is terrible. I Nintendo's is awful I'm, as well. I mean, I, I haven't played Nintendo, so I can't speak for it. But, like, I play Overwatch online pretty regularly, and I don't really have any issues yeah and any I mean, of them that than... i do are the games problem not yeah just, you know not the or other players problem. well that's what it usually is, is players leaving can't wait till players leaving just get banned 
on, on, on a on a lighter note to end, end things i played the new uh six v six lockout yeah on and all the maps are the three v three maps yeah oh boy things get crazy real fast oh I maps bet. designed for six players you throw 12 on there it's fucking chaos Jesus. oh it's so fun it's all one of my favorite bastion plays of all time oh he he like dove down did a 180 into his turret form like blasted three people oh it was great and it was only great because it was our my team's bastion oh jesus christ but hey if you've got a game you want to you know draw our attention to that we missed at e3 it's unlikely i wrote down literally everything that was announced um send us an email at, i almost said the wrong email you did i well in my head i was like oh, okay. send us an email at superbestfriendcast at gmail.com i was like nope that's the wrong one don't do that it's an email at powermoosepodcast at, at gmail.com at gmail.com we uh still still waiting we get them someday nothing since our traps gay nothing since the traps um I know we usually plug our Twitters uh there's no point read the description I link all of them it's way easier than remembering they're just read the description at at append gray. Nah, there's no point. It's linked anyway. Okay. You don't have to worry about how to spell append when it's just linked in the description. Also, to any uh, people who are wondering why I stopped the timestamps, uh, well, with the magic of YouTube, um, it was a lot of work for me to add timestamps. It would require me to do nothing but listen to the podcast after recording it, which is, you know, and, and then change because actually writing down timestamps and you know, figuring out exactly what the fuck we're talking about. There's a lot of time out of my day. And, and uh, no it did action. no increase in views, no increase in retention time. Everything stayed pretty much the exact same. So uh, I'm just not going to do it. No, it's not worth our time. <laughs> so to anyone who wants that, uh, too bad. Yeah. Got a, got a re- recommendation to send everybody off with? Hey, if you want to be permanent, like, just be so disappointed in the anime industry, watch the Berserk 2016 and 2017. It'll show you just how not to do cinematography or visuals or, you know, what terrible modeling for TV looks like and just everything you shouldn't do. It is offensive to all my senses. I mean, it's at least funny. I mean, in to, a, to look in at a, it. In a sad way. Of course.